and uh, a very good evening. Welcome to uh, what will be a Tuesday preview for racing at Sobel. Nine race card that has been put on at um, fairly short notice after um, not complaints as such, but I think uh, a lot of people again, a lot of owners and trainers are getting very frustrated that uh, a lot of the low grade handicaps over the past couple of weeks have been filling very quickly and their horses can't get a run. So, um, so what you've got tomorrow night is a nine race card where you've got five, five, count them, uh, naught to 100 handicaps, a naught to 120, a couple of claimers and a novice hurdle. What fun. Um, and as such, the naught to 100s as we go through them, you know, you, it goes without saying they need to be treated with a little bit of caution. Hopefully, there's a better two in there, though, I think. Um, and I think I might be at Southall tomorrow night as, a, as, a, as a, a, an owner. Um, in inverted commas. Um, because there's a, um, a couple of horses going where the, the owners can't make it and they've asked me to um, go instead, which would be rather nice. Actually go racing for once. Um, 4.20 at Southall, two mile handicap chase, um, full of the usual suspects. Um, Tim Rocco has been put in his, um, top weight been put in his lambda four favourite, and probably rightly so, because he comes here, comes here in form after a, a win at Banger and then uh, ran just as well, if not a bit better at market race than last time. Um, at Banger, he beat Secret Melody, who uh, reopposes here and is is quite well fancied. He was Secret Melody was in the process of running a good race himself at Market Race, and when he came down three out, um, he looked like being involved in the finish. So that form line looks perfectly strong. I think Tim Rocco is the right favourite. Um, there are a couple of lurkers in the shape of Jolly Maker, who is now uh, with John Joe, who's always been with John Joe O'Neill, but he's now a pound lower. And of course, and distance win last October, so he's well handicapped. Um, and uh, there's the um, uh, the uh, Donald McCain horse as well. I was trying to think he was trained by Court Girardo, who is on exposed over fences, so he could improve. Um, I was half tempted to, to sort of look at the ones down the bottom. Um, you've got Thomas Blossom, who will fall in again in one of these races. Um, you've got a gentleman who, if he jumps off, if He's got all his own ideas. Um, he'll travel all right. He He's always worth... He doesn't win, but he's always worth a, a back to lay. So you can sort of keep him in mind if he jumps off. I thought Storm Bay Bomber might be moderately interesting um, if he's a, a sort of 14 to 1 chance, that sort of that sort of price. Uh, you've got to go back a bit to find his last win, I'm afraid. He's he, perhaps not the horse he was at the age of 11, but this... He might get his own way up front here, I think, if they if they Nathan Moscott wants to go that way. Uh, he likes it around here. Some of his better efforts have come around here, and he is a course and distance winner. A marker 76 looks fair enough. And although he's not been seen for 200 days, um, he has got some reasonable efforts to his name fresh. So I don't think the fact that he's he has been off since January is necessarily um, necessarily a negative. Um, I think two miles is, is what he wants. They've tried him over further. He has been tried over as far as sort of two, five. But actually, I think two mile with forcing tactics might be his best chance tomorrow. Um, it's a low enough mark, and I think the ground would be ideal for him. So you'd want a price because you don't win many. He's only won three from 30 odd, but he's he's worth a look um, if he's a big price. Um, move on to the 4.55, which is... Uh, two and a half mile handicap chase. Uh, damn it, I'm out. Will probably head the market here um, after his win at Bangor last week. He was entitled to win that race. He was totally entitled to win it. Um, I thought him and Killian's well were the two um, obvious ones for the race. Of course, I went and back Killian's well and didn't have a save on damn it, I'm out. But he was um, on form, entitled to win that race. He did. Penalty tomorrow is going to make life harder for him, but at least he comes here banging form and he won't mind the ground. And when you look through some of the alternatives, there's there's not a lot. I mean, you've got Grand Career who beat Scartari here. Um, last time out, Scartari, again, as Scartari does, traded odds on in the run and couldn't get home. Looked all over the winning between two out and the last and just 
didn't get home. One day it'll fall for Scartare. Um, if you're going to back Scartare tomorrow, he's he's been putting it around about a six to one chance. Just wait. If you if you're able to, just wait because he'll be a bigger price after the first fence. He's always ridden stone cold. He'll be dropped out and he'll be a little bit detached. And you'll you'll get bigger. You'll get bigger and you should be able to get a trade out of it. And you know if if things do drop right when he'll fall in. Um, the one I was I was rather hoping that the bookmakers had missed, but I don't think they have done. Is Brotherly Company, who's now trained by now trained by Sandy Sandy Thompson. This is one of a couple of horses that Sandy's got running tomorrow night that are first time starters for him. This one comes from Joanne Foster. I do like Joanne Foster as a trainer, um, but I would say that um, a move to Sandy Thompson is going to be a step up for him. He's off a mark of ninety go back far enough i say far enough you haven't, you haven't even got to go back 12 months and he looks well handicapped on that but bookmakers haven't missed him it's interesting that for joanne he was tried in a tongue tie um for much of last year and then they tried some cheap pieces as well on the final start he just for whatever reason wasn't showing his form and they were trying him over three miles as well i'll say back in trip tomorrow back half a mile in trip and the tongue tie is missing and he's not had a wind up, which might suggest that Sandy's found something else that's been bothering Brotherly Company and they've they've found the key to him. But look, you're getting four to one. I was say I was hoping, given his his the form that he was showing for Joanne, that we might get a bit bigger, but at four to one he can win without my money on, I think. The 530, again, um another two and a half mile handicap chase. Um Demon Donju, six to four favourite after his win at Cartmel last week, um, unsurprisingly. Um, and the more you go through the race, the less appealing it becomes. It really does. Um, I don't. I, I was hoping that um, blue and yellow would be a shorter price than six and a half against uh, against the, the front pair. Um, because I, he's just I just don't think he's very good. Um, and. Uh, again, despite getting well backed here last time out, he was pretty happy to um, to throw it in two out. He made a mistake and immediately came off the bridle, and that was game over. He just doesn't find anything for pressure. But he's thirteen to two, so I don't think there's a bet in the five thirty. I'm happy to sort of skip that over. And similarly, the six o'clock, which is a two and a half mile claiming hurdle featuring seven horses, you wouldn't trust in a walkover. Um, it, it's just one of those races, you know. You've got Henryville is going to be favourite, I think, for this. Um, in fact, prices as a speaker sort of coming through. He's put in joint favourite with with um, Adjutant, two to one pair. And which of them do you trust? Um, Henryville's rate is one three five, but he ran awfully over fences at Bangor last week. He gave up the ghost very quickly, and you are being asked to take two to one about a yard that have not had a winner since the resumption of racing but it's there i mean his form is there he's the best horse in the race you've got adjutant and again he pretty much he chucked it in pretty quick at stratford admittedly that was a class three handicap hurdle but he's been doing that for a while i don't particularly i don't particularly trust him and then you've got jimmy rabbit for dr newland who's a sort of you know exactly where you are with him he's a 120 horse i think he's probably more likely to run his race than either of the other two but my life you you're desperate if you're having a bet in there desperate pass half past six is a maiden hurdle where there was a couple of interesting ones i don't know whether there'll be a bet or not but um uh, the market will probably have it about right i'm guessing they're, they're putting um leroy brown in wouldn't it? leroy nine to two that's 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 probably fair enough rock on tiger five to two he's He's having he's having his chances as Rock on Tiger. I don't think he's the easiest of um, conveyances, and the Timoshenko form from Utox the last time out is not really working. It wasn't an improvement on anything he he'd shown previously. It's not like he took a step up. Um, I was moderately interested here, I looked, and they have put him in at a, a huge price on Obeg of Kim Bailey's, who was behind Hunting Percival, putting in a, it was a. I don't think that was a bad race, you know, at Utoxeter. And although in the end he's he's finished tenth or twelve, he's only beaten a couple of them. It's not like he was panned out of sight. He got beat twenty one lengths, and he drifted like a barge that day. I think he was put in, he was putting about a twelve fourteen chance for it, and he's he's gone off nearly three figures on Betfair. 
I expect him to do better tomorrow. And he might be the sort of horse I'll back with extra places. I don't think he can get first three, but he, he could fall in four fifth. And you should still get a decent should still get a decent price about him. I think he'll take another step forward tomorrow. You know, he's he's no good thing, but if you know you could run to sort of one fifteen and win this tomorrow. Something around that around that mark. And if if as I suspect Obey can run to about ninety, then you know, first five is is not impossible at a big price. I do like Cuban Sun, Kelly Morgan's horse, but I worry about the ground tomorrow. I think it might be a bit quick for Cuban Sun. Uh, I think he definitely um or she rather i should say she definitely wants it on the slow side and with that i'll be keeping an eye out for her with handicaps in mind later on in the season seven o'clock is a handicap hurdle uh, division one of the naught to 100 and um i was originally at first glance i was struggling to find a bet i had another look at it with fresh eyes just after lunch and uh, Skyliner, these, these two that are interesting. Skyliner Breeze is the first one. It's a change of headgear for Skyliner Breeze tomorrow. Um, put cheap pieces on, and I think a mark still of ninety-two might be left behind either tomorrow or certainly in time. I think he's one horse that could prove a little bit better than a naught to a hundred horse. Not much better, but I think he could be a little bit better than a naught to hundred horse. And I thought Purple Jazz from Jeremy Scotts. Is a little bit more interesting than than one or two. He's been putting as a twenty eight chance, um, mark of eighty seven. Which, if you want to go back, sort of eighteen months, would be would be all right. It'd be workable certainly. And if you um, if you look um, if you look back at the form that he was showing um, twelve months ago on the flat, he was sort of running again there. To, to 53 which would give him a chance off 87 i think there might be more to come brian carver takes five off well the interesting thing with the race is i think it will be slowly run this race i couldn't see where the pace is particularly coming from um and i think that might suit purple jazz i don't think he wants an out now and to end gallop i think if they go um if they go at a moderate pace i think that will suit him particularly with this trip in mind of two and a half which he's he's worth a go at because he gets 14 furlongs on the flat. So he's, he's worth a crack at this sort of the trip, particularly if it's going to be slowly run. As I say, 28 to 1 though, small each way, I think for me. Nothing more than that in a, a race where, you know, anything could happen. 7.30 is and the, the second division of it. The the interesting ones again, I'll point these out. Um, um, Isle Road, who ran here over three mile last june finished third and then came out one at newton abbott when dropped back to this sort of trip i think our road is quite interesting particularly if there's money for our road and particularly if he goes off in front um and from a yard of course that you know david jess we've, we've pointed him out numerous times they, they do like a bit of a gamble and um, watching briefs been put in as one of the favorites for this but you're you're taking four to one about a horse who is um it was what naught from about 20 odd now i think yeah naught from 23 so you're taking four or one about a 23 runner maiden um there probably is a racing watching brief but you you know it's the sort of thing you you want to take a bigger price about and arguably a better race greenview paradise the, this is the other the, the second jeremy scott one that i think is quite interesting up upped in trip because again on the flat um greenview paradise really sort of needs a mile six and 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 further um He's had uh, he's had three runs uh, since the resumption of racing. Ran okay at Kempton over two miles on the flat, um, and then refused to race at Lingfield, which is obviously a bit of a worry. He wouldn't come out of the stalls, and then at Newton Abbott um, never got in it over two one. I don't, as I say, I think this step up to two four and a bit might see Greenview Paradise in a better light, and a mark of eighty five is definitely workable. You know, based on that sort of Kempton run in, in June, that was off 51. So it was only £33 higher here. And, you know, you, you go on that 35 to £45 range has been what's what you should be looking at. So I think a mark of 85 is, is definitely workable for Greenview Paradise, I think. Um, I think he's more interested in a few uh, in that uh, in that 7.30. 8 o'clock is a, a maiden hurdle where um, it's a race to watch, I think, rather than... Than, than have a betting. I couldn't find anything in particular here that I was um, 
I was interested in. And the 8.30, um, uh, this, we finish off with a, a two mile handicap hurdle, naught to 100 again. I get. I thought this was one of the more interesting races of of the night, and I did. Um, I did find a bet in here, uh, and I'm guessing. I'm just waiting for prices to go up now. I'm guessing bookmakers have cottoned on to this one again. Um, let's just have a look. Yeah, eight to one. Okay, well that's probably fair enough for Zamakam, um, the second of the Sandy Thompson runners that's coming here from another yard, and this one arguably a little bit more interesting. It's coming from Lucy Normiles uh, yard. And Lucy's now. Um, some of you will know as, as packed in training um, and her horses have, have gone to other yards and one of them, Granite City Dog, I think a couple of them actually from, from Lucy's yard that have gone to Mike Smith's have won first time up. Granite City Dog was one and I want to say a horse called Regal Regatta. I might be wrong about that. Regal something and that one as well first time up for them. So it gives hope that you know anything that's come from the yard and that is going to another trainer could um could improve for the switch the change of scenery and again you're looking at a, a horse here off a mark of 89 um you wind it back to perth you know in a maiden hurdle um you know may 2019 when it was finishing third to mr manjiro and at the time i know that was a maiden hurdle so you you, you the market is sort of half irrelevant but uh, at that point was rated 106 so he's he's considerably lower off 89 tomorrow night ryan manny is booked which i think is a plus and again you don't want to say a little bit of money for the horse but in a a race that will take very very little winning very little winning you can put the pen the red pen went through half of these almost sort of straight away um i thought eight to one that, that's more interesting than than a few that are a shorter price than that to be perfectly honest so uh that'd be um that would be Zamakan in the in the last. So there we go. There's the card. Um, as I say, bets few and far between possibly, but um, hopefully sorted out um, a winner or two in there for you. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks a lot.